What we are going to do now is uh, move ahead to uh, you know try to give a proof of the very important Riemann mapping theorem okay and uh, for this I will need to know uh, I mean we will have to uh, look at other things in uh, as a preparation. So, the first things that we will be looking at are the so called harmonic functions about which you would have studied in a first course in complex analysis okay. So, uh, what I am going to do is try to recall harmonic functions the uh, so called mean value property uh, then the maximum principle and then the Schwartz lemma which is uh, which is the fundamental uh, lemma that we need in the context of the uh, that is the simplest lemma that we want in the context of the Riemann mapping theorem. So, uh, so so, my much of this is something that you would have seen in a, in a first probably you would have seen in a first course in complex analysis, but nevertheless it is important. So, uh, this will help you to uh, refresh your memory uh, if you have seen it once and if you have not seen it this is an opportunity to learn it. So, so we are looking at harmonic functions. So, basically you know uh, you take uh, d uh, or rather u in the complex plane a domain and uh, f uh, so let me use a, a small u from capital U to R. Uh, so, it is a real valued function ok it is called harmonic. if uh, it is continuous and uh, has uh, partial derivatives uh, of up to uh, order uh, less than or equal to 2 which are continuous and satisfies Laplace's equation. Laplace's equation Uh, which is uh, del u is equal to 0 where where this where this delta that is delta u is equal to 0 where delta is the Laplace operator it is dou square by dou x square plus dou square by dou y square ok. So, uh, Of course, in this definition, so I, so what I've done in this definition is I've defined a real-valued harmonic function on a on a domain in the uh, complex plane, and uh, of I'm assuming the function is continuous and it has partial derivatives up to order uh, less than or equal to. Uh, of course, you know partial derivatives means I am taking partial derivatives with respect to x and y, okay, uh, with respect to x and y. So, this means that you know dou, dou u by dou x the first partial derivative with respect to x then dou u by dou y and then uh, for the second partial derivatives you have the pure derivatives dou square u by dou x square dou square u by dou y square and you have also the mixed partial derivative dou square uh, u by dou x dou y and dou square u by dou y dou x. And, uh, uh, we assume that all these partial derivatives exist and they are continuous ok. And uh, uh, I mean the point is that somehow you know the 
uh, at least in the in the definition it we we insist only up to uh, uh, the existence of derivatives of orders up to 2 okay but uh, but the fact is that you know uh, it's ra it's rather amazing the fact is that you put this condition and then uh, the partial derivatives of all orders will exist okay uh, so the requirement of the partial derivatives of order a, a partial derivatives of order up to 2 existing is just uh, so that this equation can be written down okay and of course to write this equation i do not need the mixed partial derivative dou square u by dou x dou y or dou square u by dou y dou x okay but the point is uh, normally continuity of <coughs> the function and of the of all these partial derivatives is assumed uh, but the the big theorem <coughs> the big theorem that you get from complex analysis is that you take uh, such a harmonic function then it is infinitely differentiable okay that is partial derivatives of all orders exist okay and they are all continuous it is a very deep theorem and why it is uh, uh, why it is so deep is because uh, the you are getting infinite differentiability you are getting existence of partial derivatives of any order okay and you know uh, let me tell you a few words about this I mean you would have seen in a first course in complex analysis that uh, probably we will revisit that again that you know if you uh, you know that if you take an analytic function okay then the real and imaginary parts of an analytic function are harmonic functions okay and we and we call the imaginary part a, 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 a harmonic conjugate of the real part okay and conversely if you give me a harmonic function all right uh, uh, if the domain is simply connected okay then it will always have a harmonic conjugate that means so the so that means that you give me a harmonic function it will be the real part of an analytic function at least on a small disk okay and uh, the moment it is a real part of an analytic function you know analytic functions are infinitely differentiable because analyticity the beautiful property about analyticity is that you you assume differentiability once with respect to the complex variable z and you get infinite differentiability and the moment <coughs> you know that <coughs> the moment you know that it follows that the real and imaginary parts of an analytic function are also infinitely differentiable okay therefore the fact that uh, you take a harmonic function which has derivatives only up to order less than or equal to 2 and satisfies laplace equation okay uh, actually it, uh, it's a very it's weaker when compared to the uh, result that the function u will actually have derivatives of all orders okay and it is a and, and all the derivatives of, of all possible orders all, uh, all mixed partial derivatives will exist and they will all be continuous the, the reason is because a, u is locally uh, the uh, I mean u locally is the real part of an analytic function and an analytic function is infinitely differentiable that is the reason okay. So, so the so what you must remember is that this condition that we have put that the 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 uh, 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 u satisfies Laplace's equation and uh, all these uh, partial derivatives exist up to order two and their continuous is a rather weak condition. Okay. Uh, now you see now for for such harmonic functions, uh, they have a very important property that is called the mean value property. Okay, so I'll explain what this uh, mean value property is. Uh, so maybe I can save some space and rub this off, and write partial derivatives here with respect to x and y. Okay. Uh, so let me let me define this uh, this mean value property.
So, well, uh, I can of course you know uh, now I can extend this. Uh, before I do that, I can extend this definition to a complex uh, valued function being harmonic. So you know, if f is now a function from u to c, when will I say f is harmonic if its real and imaginary parts are harmonic? So, so let me write that down also. That's just an extension of this definition. We say f from u to c is harmonic if uh, real part of f imaginary part of f from u to r are harmonic. So a complex valued function uh, is harmonic if and only if it is uh, real and imaginary parts are harmonic right now what is this business about mean value okay see suppose you have suppose you have some domain u and you have a function f defined uh, on u taking values in the complex plane and you take this point uh, take a point z not inside u right then what you do is you take a uh, take a circle centered at z not uh, radius r right then well of course I am taking the circle inside u so that uh, even on the on the circle at every point on the circle f is defined okay. Now what I do is you know uh, I define f mean value okay this is the mean value of f at uh, over the circle uh, so, over this circle centered at z0 radius r, I define this mean value. This is to be, and this is a function of r, okay. It will change if I change the radius of the circle. So, I am looking at circles centered at the point z0, okay, of various radii small r, okay. And for given one such circle with radius small r, I am defining this mean value, okay, of f with respect to that circle and what is it it is just you know uh, the 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 uh, the mean value is defined like this you simply calculate f of z you take f of z that is a value of f at a point z on the circle and then you uh, multiply and then you integrate with respect to mod dz because integ you know uh, integrating with respect to mod dz will actually give you the arc length okay integrate integrating mod dz over uh, an, an arc will give you the length of the arc all right so and what is the path uh, path of integration is the circle it's mod z minus z not equal to r okay i do this and then uh, this is you know this is to be thought of as summing all the values of f as I move across the circle okay and this mod dz should be thought of as the uh, uh, arc length right. So this is the sum of all the values of f as you take the uh, as you move the point around the circle and then if you want the average value I have to divide by the arc length of the circle which is 2 pi r okay. So this is the mean value. So the mean value is the sum of all you know how a mean value is defined it is an average. So what I am doing is uh, I am taking I am summing up all the values of the function on the on the boundary circle that is what the numerator gives that is what the integral gives and then I am dividing by the length of the circle the, the, the circumference the circle which is 2 pi r okay and uh, this is called the mean value of f for that circle. All right. Now you know if you put z is equal to z not, you know you can parameterize the circle as z equal to z not plus r e power i theta, where theta varies from zero to two pi. Okay, you can you can re, you can parameterize this circle, and if you do that, you know how, what will this integral change to? See, d z will be uh, r. Uh, uh, into uh, uh, 
e power i theta into i d theta ok. Mind you r is fixed theta is varying alright and if I differentiate e to the i theta with respect to theta I will get e power i theta times i right and if I calculate mod d z I will end up with r uh, d theta ok. In fact I will get r mod d theta if you want and I can write as r d theta because uh, if, I, if I take theta to be increasing then d theta is a change in theta is also positive ok. So if you put it in this uh, if you substitute if you for this if you if you change uh, uh, this integral in z into this integral into an integral in theta what you will get is the mean value of f over r is well it is integral from 0 to 2 pi so theta will vary from 0 to 2 pi f of z0 plus r e power i theta and mod dz is going to give me r d theta and of course I will have uh, I will have a 2 pi r so it it also has this expression you can also write it as integral from 0 to 2 pi f of z0 plus r e to the i theta into d, d theta by 2 pi. So this is another expression for the mean value okay of uh, f over the circle. Now what is uh, so this is this how you define the this is just the mean value and uh, uh, the only thing you must notice is that the mean value is taken on the on the circular arc the mean value of is taken on the circular arc and the fact that you are doing it on the circular arc is reflected by integrating with respect to mod d because integral with respect to mod dz over an arc gives you the length of the arc ok. So this mod dz comes for that reason because you are adding up values of the function on the arc right and of course you divide by the length of the arc which is 2 pi r in this case the arc is a circle the whole a full circle. Now what are the properties of this mean value of r ok the first property is that this so you know I have cooked up a new function. I cooked, cooked up a new function uh, uh, for sufficiently small r I have to take sufficiently small r uh, starting from uh, uh, well start, starting from uh, r equal to 0 alright and I and I am going to uh, look at sufficiently small r all r below a certain value so that all these uh, 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 circles are inside uh, my domain right. And I am getting a function based on that r, I am getting values, I am getting mean values of f based on this r, ok. Now, what is the property of so you know, so f is f sub mean value is defined from uh, well, uh, it is defined on 0 rho uh, if you want. Uh, maybe I can even put uh, uh, so the way the way I have done it it is 0 comma rho uh, to uh, C where you know uh, rho is if you want uh, the maximum of all r such that uh, the circle mod z minus z not less than r lies in U. I am I am actually taking the largest possible circle right uh, in fact let me put equal to r I want the circle take the you take the maximum over all r ok such so that uh, mod z minus z not equal to r lies in u uh, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, probably this maximum may not exist ok. Uh, so I think it is safer to put supremum here if you want you can put supremum uh, so uh, so if I, if I want to write it like this you should write a supremum over all r such that mod z minus z not equal to r is in u uh, in fact I want the whole I want the whole uh, I want the whole disk inside u so you know it is very important that uh, 
I do not want any holes in between okay I do not want any holes in between uh, so so I have this mean value uh, function all right now the claim is that this mean value function is continuous okay it is a continuous function okay and uh, so f sub m v is continuous that is a that is a first observation why is it continuous because you see you see it is continuous in what in it is continuous in the variable r which lies in 0 rho okay uh, uh, well why is that so because you know uh, <coughs> it is it is pretty easy it is actually it is because of the continuity of f the continuity of <coughs> f sub mv the mean value of f as a function of r is a result of the continuity of f as a function of z of course here I have not I have not mentioned that so uh, uh, you assume uh, so here let me let me add that if f is continuous on u so if I take a continuous complex valued function then the mean value function that it defines is also continuous why is that so it is because you see uh, if uh, given epsilon greater than 0 okay if you estimate the difference between uh, uh, f mean value uh, of uh, let us say some r naught and f mean value of r okay then this turns out to be I mean it is going to be modulus of if I if I use this I will get uh, integral 0 to 2 pi uh, f of z naught uh, plus uh, r naught e power i theta minus f of z uh, naught plus r e power i theta uh, the whole into uh, d theta by 2 pi this is what I will get by the definition of the mean value and but you know I can use this you know this fact modulus of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the modulus so this is less than or equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi of mod of the integrand which is z0 plus r0 e power i theta minus f of z0 plus r e power i theta uh, into mod d theta by 2 pi which again continues to be d theta by 2 pi right and uh, well this can be uh, you know this can be made less than integral from 0 to 2 pi epsilon d theta by 2 pi which is equal to epsilon okay if uh, we choose uh, delta greater than 0 which exists by continuity of f uh, such that mod of f of uh, z uh, uh, let me write uh, z prime minus f of z can be made less than epsilon if uh, mod z minus z prime is less than delta you see f is continuous therefore you know if you give me any uh, z and z prime then I can make the values of f at z and z prime as close as I want if I choose z and z prime close enough and of course here I am taking z prime to be uh, any point of this uh, type z0 plus r0 e per i theta namely a point on the circle with radius r0 and I am taking z to be a point on the circle with radius r okay and I can do this just because of continuity and what does this calculation tell you it tells you that uh, it tells you that you know uh, uh, z z is lying on a uh, circle of radius r z prime is lying on a circle of radius r0 all right and the fact that the, this distance can be made less than delta means that you are you know bringing 
uh, R0 and R close okay. So the moral of the story is that if you bring R0 and R close okay then F R0 and F M V R0 and F M V R come close so that will tell you that uh, if R tends to R0 okay then F M V R tends to F M V R0 which means that uh, F M V is a continuous function of R okay so this tells you that F sub M V the mean value function it is a continuous function of R right. So uh, so you know so the diagram is like this I mean I am I am having this Z0 I am having this R0 and I am having this circle and this is where I am taking my Z prime okay which is this argument and then I am then I have this bigger circle which is bigger or smaller it does not matter both ways. So this is R and I am having and I am having a, a point Z there. And uh, if I bring if I bring uh, R close to R0 I am actually bringing uh, Z and Z prime close okay and if Z and Z prime come close then F of Z and F of Z prime come close and therefore the, the, the difference between F M V R0 and F M V R0 uh, F M V R uh, becomes small enough okay. So this is the proof of the fact that the mean value function defined by uh, uh, a complex valued continuous function is a continuous function of R alright. Then the further thing is actually this mean value function actually is even defined at the origin and it takes the value f of z0 okay. So further uh, 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 limit R tends to 0 uh, f m b of R is actually f of z0 the mean values uh, the mean value uh, uh, function uh, tends to uh, f z0 as r goes to 0 or you, you, you must understand that as r goes to 0 the circle is becoming a smaller and smaller and smaller circle uh, centered at z0 and you know it is it is natural to expect you know as I make this circle smaller and smaller and smaller the function values are also going to come close to fz0 therefore you should expect the average also to be fz0. I mean if all the function values are close enough to fz0 then the average should also become close enough to fz0 okay and then therefore if you take the limit you should get only fz0 okay. So this is intuitively correct but then you can rigorously prove it by the same method what you can do is you can calculate the uh, uh, value f m v r minus f of z0 if you calculate this what you will get is the same kind of you will get modulus uh, the same kind of estimation as here integral 0 to 2 pi uh, I will get f of z plus z0 plus r e power i theta uh, minus f z0 the d theta by 2 pi uh, oops. So and again modulus of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the modulus so I will get uh, this is less than or equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi mod of f of z0 plus r e power i theta <coughs> minus f of z0 well uh, into d theta by 2 pi and this can be made lesser than integral 0 to 2 pi epsilon d theta by 2 pi which is equal to epsilon. I can make this less than epsilon because I can make this less than epsilon and that is because of continuity at z0 of f if I make r sufficiently small okay. Uh, this is less than epsilon if r is sufficiently small due to continuity of f at z0 after all f is continuous also at the center alright. So the same so what what this tells you is as, as, as r tends to 0 f m v r tends to f, f z0 so actually so you know uh, you have you this the mean value function actually extends to 0 so 0 comma rho to <coughs> c with f of mean value at uh, 
0 is f z naught okay. So, what you have done is we have defined a mean value function which at uh, at 0 the mean value is f z naught which is just the value of f at z naught and <coughs> for any r it you get the uh, mean of the values of f along the circle uh, centered at z naught radius r all right. <coughs> now this is this, so this is all about the mean value function. Now when does a function have a mean value property uh, the function is said to have mean value property if uh, the mean values of the function all they are all equal to the value at the center for sufficiently small uh, for sufficiently small disks okay. So, so here is a definition uh, so this is the this is the definition of the mean value property the continuous function f from u to c is said to have the mean value property I will abbreviate it as MVP it, it, it has the mean value property at z0 at z0 if f mean value of r is actually equal to fz0 which is just f mean value at 0 for all r sufficiently small. Okay. So, uh, that is that is for all r belonging to 0 epsilon. for some epsilon greater than 0 okay. In other words the function a complex continuous complex valued function has a mean value property at at a point if you take sufficiently small circles surrounding that point and you take the mean value of the function you get exactly the value of the function at the center okay. This is the mean value property. So, you see you see this mean value property is some uh, it is a uh, it is a completely uh, uh, it is a kind of integral condition right because uh, after all the mean value is defined by an integral the mean value is defined by this integral here or here okay and uh, the integral of a continuous function always exists right. So, uh, it is very easy to define and now comes the big the big theorem uh, really big theorem. So, so the big theorem is uh, function is harmonic if and only if it has a mean value property a continuous function is harmonic if and only if it has a mean value property at every point. It is a terrific theorem because you see uh, one part of the theorem says that if it is harmonic it has a mean value property that is more or less easy to prove okay and you would have seen a proof of that in the uh, uh, in a first course in complex analysis by for example taking the fu the function to be the real part of an analytic function okay uh, or you, you and if it is a complex valued function you can even take uh, 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 I mean you can do it using analytic functions you can use analytic functions for example and show that uh, uh, analytic functions have the mean value property okay. In fact the fact that in fact the analytic functions having the mean value property is exactly Cauchy's integral formula in a way all right. Uh, and on the other hand the striking thing is the the other the, the, the implication in the other direction that you start with the continuous function which has only mean value property and what you get is that it is harmonic and why it is so powerful is because the condition you have put is an integral condition I mean you have this mean value function you have the mean value function associated to that function which is defined by an integral okay and it is uh, it is defined on just a you know interval uh, uh, interval to the right of 0 and of course you can include 0 also <coughs> the 
the fact that this is for sufficiently small values equal to the function value at z0 okay it seems to be rather simple condition but that condition if you put at every z0 what it results in is that the function is harmonic and what is harmonicity that is a great deal as I told you saying that the function is harmonic means you are saying it is infinitely differentiable okay at least <coughs> it is uh, I have uh, uh, told you that even though in the definition of harmonic functions we only require that it is uh, uh, de uh, derivatives of the order 2 exist and are continuous but it is actually infinitely differentiable and uh, it also satisfies Laplace's equation. So, it is rather amazing that you know you put this simple condition on a continuous function okay it results in the function becoming harmonic it makes the, con the it makes the function c infinity it makes both the real and imaginary parts of the function infinitely differentiable with respect to both variables and uh, that is amazing and all the derivatives uh, all 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 mixed partial derivatives of all orders exist they are all continuous and on top of that the function also satisfies the Laplace's equation okay. So, you see this condition uh, it is it is a it is a it is a re really a remarkable property. So, here is a theorem the theorem is for a function for a continuous function f from u to c the following are equivalent so what are they number one is f is harmonic number two f has the mean value property at each point of So it is an amazing uh, it is an amazing equivalence okay see 1 implies 2 is easier okay it is easier provided you use uh, some Cauchy theory uh, which you would have covered in a first course in complex analysis okay but 2 implies 1 is serious uh, harder that if you have you can obviously expect it to be harder because the condition 2 seems to be a very simple condition you are just saying that uh, some integral is uh, you calculate some integral uh, for small values of r and uh, all the value all the values should coincide with the value of the function at the center okay. Uh, the mean values of the function uh, around small enough circles should give you the value at the center of the circle that is the condition 2 so relatively simple condition but then from that you are trying to conclude that f is harmonic okay yeah, which means effectively you are getting infinite differentiability of f which is very very serious all right. So, uh, 2 implies 1 is harder and one proof of 2 implies 1 involves the so called uh, 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 Dirichlet problem okay it involves uh, uh, the Poisson kernel uh, the Poisson integral formula uh, using which you can solve the Dirichlet problem for the disc okay and then uh, you can get 2 implies 1 okay. I will try to see if we can cover that we have enough time to do that in, in this series of lectures but I can for the moment the easier part 1 implies 2 is something that we can easily check okay. So uh, well for for 1 implies 2 uh, of course I am going to use some complex analysis to do it right. So what I am going to do is uh, 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 you know uh, put u equal to real part of f okay mind you f is I, I am I am as assuming f is harmonic all right and I take u to be real part of f okay and and what I am going to do is I am just going to uh, 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 look at a sufficiently small disk small disk mod z minus z not less than rho inside u for given z not in u okay. Now uh, mind you uh, u u is the real part of f 
uh, and f is harmonic and you know f is mind you f is only a complex valued harmonic function ok. I am not saying f is analytic I am not saying f is analytic I am just saying f is a complex valued harmonic function therefore the, the definition is that both the real part and the imaginary part of f are real valued harmonic functions that is the, that is all I have. So, I am taking u to be real part of f ok it is it, it is it is harmonic is given to me now I am going to use this very powerful theorem that if you have a harmonic function and uh, uh, if you are if it is defined on a simply connected domain ok then it has a harmonic conjugate ok namely I can find another function such that if you put that as the imaginary part of a new function then that with this as a real part then you will get an analytic function ok. So, I am going to use that which is this is a fact from complex analysis ok. So, I am going to use that. So, uh, 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 yeah so since mod z minus z naught less than rho is simply connected Uh, there exists G analytic that is holomorphic in mod z minus z naught less than rho with real part of G is equal to uh, uh, u ok and imaginary part of G will be the will be a harmonic conjugate of u. So, imaginary part of G is a harmonic conjugate conjugate of u and you would have seen on first course in complex analysis uh, that uh, you can get different harmonic conjugates, but they will only differ by a constant right. So, uh, of course, you know uh, you can prove 1 implies 2 also directly apply appealing to uh, some version of Green's theorem right that is also another way of proving it, but I am trying to circumvent I am I am trying to avoid all that and I am trying to give a an elegant proof which anyway uses some powerful results, but my my main idea is to uh, uh, you know uh, give you an indication of uh, one line of argument uh, that will convince you uh, that at least statement 1 implies statement 2 all right. So, and now you see now you know now I am in the following situation. So, you know I have this I have this z naught I have if I take an r such that r is less than rho. So, this is inside u and I have f I have this g defined here with real part of g is equal to u ok. Now, you know you apply the Cauchy integral formula ok by the Cauchy integral formula you know that if I cal if I calculate the integral over mod z minus z naught equal to r of course, whenever I am calculating such integrals I am taking the positive orientation you know, with the anti clockwise orientation. Suppose I calculate f of uh, z by z minus z naught ok you know Cauchy integral formula tells sorry not f g you know that I will get uh, I think uh, maybe I have to put a 1 by 2 pi i you know that I will get g of uh, uh, I will simply get g of z naught ok. This is the Cauchy integral formula all right ok and <coughs> and you know if you if you write out the integral uh, in terms of theta on the right side then this is the same as 1 by 2 pi i integral of from theta equal to 0 to 2 pi g of z is r z naught plus r e power i theta and just parameterizing this circle 
with radius small r center z0 as z equal to z0 plus r e power i theta where r small r is fixed and theta is varying from 0 to 2 pi. So then I will get this of course I have forgotten a dz here I should put that dz there as a variable of integration and uh, well you know if I write out what that dz is I have already written it out here it is r e to the i theta i d theta divided by uh, z minus z0 is r e to the i theta and what I will get is I get 1 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi g of z0 plus r e to the i theta uhhh so you know I let me write it in this form d theta by 2 pi this is what I get okay and what is this this is you know if you this g is real part of g plus imaginary part of g plus i times imaginary part of g so you know so if I write it like that this is integral uh, if I write g as real part of g plus i times imaginary part of g what I will get is I will get real part of g mean value at r plus i times imaginary part of g sub mean value at r this is what I get and that is equal to on the left side g z0 which is real part of uh, g z0 plus imaginary part i times imaginary part of g z0 this is what I get okay. But then what is real part of g my real part of g is u real part of g is u so what I will get is if I compare real parts I will get u at z0 is the mean value of u at r for 0 less than or equal to r less than rho and this this is the same as saying that you know u has the mean value property okay. So I mean what I have done is the same proof actually is the usual proof that you would have seen a first course in complex analysis that tells you that the real and imaginary parts of a uh, uh, real and imaginary parts of uh, an analytic function have the mean value property okay. So what I am doing is you give me a harmonic function I am using this rather uh, powerful theorem that uh, if you take a sufficiently small disc which is simply connected then it has a uh, 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 I mean uh, if I take a real valued harmonic function then this is real part of an analytic function okay and then I am using the fact that the real and imaginary parts of an analytic function have the mean value property okay and I am saying I am just trying to deduce, deduce it using Cauchy integral formula. So this proves uh, uh, this is uh, this is one way of showing 1 implies 2 okay for 2 implies 1 we need lot of machinery so I will not get into that but my aim, but my aim is to tell you that you know uh, harmonic functions have the mean value property alright which in some sense you should have seen in the first course in complex analysis. Now, uh, now I come to the uh, so called maximum principle I come to the so called maximum principle and what is this maximum principle so you would have uh, 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 you would have again loosely learned this in a first course in complex analysis as uh, if you take an analytic function on a domain uh, with the boundary uh, bounded okay a bounded domain uh, so the domain is bounded so its boundary is also bounded then the analytic function if you take the modulus of the analytic function that will attain its maximum only on the boundary and not in the interior and if it attains a, a maximum value uh, the maximum of the interior then it has to be constant so a non constant analytic function will attain its maximum only on the boundary okay. Now this is actually a property of uh, this is actually a property of harmonic functions actually so the 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 maximum modulus being attained at the boundary is a property of the harmonic functions okay and that is why analytic functions have that property because analytic function is harmonic the analytic function has both real and imaginary parts which are harmonic okay and the mean value property for I mean the 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 maximum the maximum modulus principle for harmonic functions gives you the maximum modulus principle for analytic functions in fact it also gives you maximum modulus principle for uh, uh, complex valued harmonic functions okay. So, uh, 
So, let me so let me write this uh, maximum principle uh, so let me uh, let me write a few cases so this is the maximum principle for the real case and uh, what is the maximum principle for the real case uh, you have u from capital u to r uh, harmonic on uh, uh, domain u in the complex plane so u is a real valued harmonic function all right and uh, uh, so this is let suppose uh, m is an upper bound for u for small u in capital U then unless u is a is constant on u m is a strict upper bound uh, I should say uh, strict upper bound on u. So, this is the this is the uh, real this is the maximum principle for real valued harmonic functions. So, you know the situation is that I have this domain u in the complex plane and I have a harmonic function on that right and uh, and suppose uh, all the values of u are bounded by bounded above by a real number m ok. So, that is if so you know if I if I write it in symbols if u of z is less than or equal to m for all z belonging to u ok and uh, u is not constant on u then u of z is strictly less than m for all z in u. So, this is the so, every upper bound is a strict upper bound that is the maximum principle. In other words uh, another way of saying it is that if u attains this upper bound that is if the upper bound is not strict and if that upper bound is attained in at some point then it has to be constant. So, the another way of saying it is another way of saying it is if uh, u of z naught is equal to m for some is it not in u then u is equal to constant is equal to m uh, on capital U all right this is this is the strict version of the maximum principle right this is the maximum principle for the real case and then you have the same statement as a maximum principle for the complex case and then you have a maximal principle for uh, 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 also for analytic functions ok. So, uh, so let me write out the other case also maximum principle complex case. So, here I take f from u to r u to c uh, complex uh, 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 harmonic function. So, it is a complex valued harmonic function on uh, a domain u in C and so, so the same statement suppose uh, m is an upper bound for mod f ok. Now, because it is complex valued by a bound for f we actually mean a bound for mod f ok. Uh, in u then unless f is 
constant on u on u m is a strict upper bound for mod f on u. So, this is a statement okay. The only thing is when you take a complex valued uh, function you have to uh, and when you talk about bounds you know you have to take mod f because you know I cannot write uh, complex number one complex number lesser than another complex number because complex numbers are not ordered okay and uh, the ordering of the real numbers does not ex extend to complex numbers right. So, I cannot write a statement such as uh, m is an upper bound for u, small u here uh, u is real valued I can write that okay but I cannot write uh, m is an upper bound for f does not make sense because f is complex valued I should only write m is an upper bound for mod f okay. In general whenever we say f is bounded we always mean uh, there is a bound for the modulus of f okay and then the rest of the statement is the same thing. So, that is if uh, uh, so let me write this if f of mod f z is less than or equal to m for all z in u and uh, f is not constant on u then mod f z is strictly less than m for all z in u. So, it is a strict upper bound and th there is and of course the other way of writing it is also like this if f of mod f z is equal to m for some uh, z not in u uh, then uh, f is constant on u ok. And, uh, uh, and therefore you know this applies also for uh, uh, mind you it, here f is harmonic complex valued but need not be analytic ok. But then even if f is analytic this applies because after all uh, if f is analytic then both the real and imaginary parts of f are harmonic therefore f is also an, uh, harmonic An analytic function is always harmonic because it satisfies Laplace equation both the real and imaginary parts are harmonic. But a harmonic complex valued function need not be uh, 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 analytic. So, uh, this also applies to analytic functions right and the usual version that we, uh, we uh, often use uh, is the is the, the contrapositive of this which is that if your domain is bounded ok then f attains its uh, in the in the real case the maximum is attained on the boundary in the complex case the modulus of the the modulus maximum modulus is attained on the boundary. So, let me write that also. If u is bounded and u extends continuously to u union dou u, dou u is a boundary of u then u attains a maximum on the boundary. So, this is the version that you are all familiar with which is actually which is also uh, equivalent to that. So, let me write the same thing here if u is bounded uh, and uh, f extends to a continuous function uh, to, a, to a continuous function. on u union dou u mind you in these cases u union dou u is compact because it is closed because I have added the boundary dou u to u and it is bounded. So, it is closed and bounded so it is compact ok. Then uh, mod f attains a maximum on dou u and and only on do you okay you cannot get a maximum in the interior okay i'm not so i should say uh, uh, 
in fact instead of saying a maximum I will say all maxima only on the boundary and here also I should say all maxima only on the boundary. You cannot get a maximum in the interior unless it is constant ok. So, uh, <coughs> do you of course <coughs> unless uh, u is constant. Here also, unless unless <coughs> f is a constant. Okay, so the either uh, the function is a constant, in which case it has the same uh, value throughout. If it is real value and it has the same modulus throughout, including the boundary, if it is uh, complex value. Or if it is not constant, then the maximum is only on the boundary for the for real valued function and for the modulus of the complex valued function. So, this is a maximum prop this is a maximum principle for harmonic functions ok. Uh, I will I will continue in the next lecture and I will give you a, a proof of this I think it just will use the mean value property uh, very easily and then uh, so I am making use of the fact that harmonic functions have the mean value property which I more or less sketched a proof of right. And then uh, my aim of doing all this is to get to the so called Schwarz lemma ok and uh, that is uh, uh, required in a preliminary discussion of the Riemann mapping theorem ok ok. So, I will continue in the next lecture.